Hello everyone, this is Vibi. So welcome back to our channel, The Nightingale Tales. Today I'm gonna tell you some important news. Everyone who is waiting for their AIMS no set document verification. So here is the news guys, your, your online document verification has been completed in every branch. So uh, you people need not to worry about the document verification. Okay, so let's get started before starting the video. Please like, share, our videos to your friends which are who whom you think the video is useful for so uh, this video has some diseases and their particular symptoms which helps in the diagnosis of this particular diseases so the primary sign of a disease that helps in the diagnosis of a particular condition uh, by seeing these conditions you can say that the particular symptom is of this particular disease so let's get started the first question sorry first dish is the disease and its primary symptom it is systemic lupus erythematosus so the butterfly rash over face is the primary symptom of this uh, sle disease it is an autoimmune disorder it is an autoimmune disease so uh, if a person with butterfly rash over face is in then you can blindly say that it is of big cause SLE but uh, you should notice for other symptoms too to diagnose the and to diagnose and confirm the condition because in butterfly rash uh, maybe sometimes it, it might be possible it might be some acne too in a butterfly sh shape so uh, the rest of the symptoms should also match with the disease okay next Hirschsprung's disease uh, so Hirschsprung's disease is uh, commonly seen in children uh, it is also called uh, toxic megacolon 2 so congenital Hirschsprung's disease is seen with in children or newborn so and the main or the primary symptom of this disease is the child will pass the stools which are in ribbon shapes so here you can see in the picture uh, the stool is is like of ribbon shape so it's like a ribbon so the disease is characterized by ribbon like stool symptom so next question you can see rest of uh, symptoms like uh, having diarrhea and uh, uh, imbalance in uh, electrolytes these are the other conditions but uh, the primary symptom is ribbon like stools next pulmonary tuberculosis so uh, there are uh, two types of tuberculosis one is pulmonary tuberculosis and the second one is extra pulmonary tuberculosis extra pulmonary tuberculosis is nothing but tuberculosis that affects uh, the organs that are not comes under this pulmonary system like uh, uh, spine you can see spine tb uh, uti that is tuberculosis uti urinary tract infections uh, caused by tubercle uh, tubercle bacteria mm, so there are many other organs intestinal tb2 that is peritoneal tb so there are many other conditions which are comes under uh, extra pulmonary tuberculosis but uh, the main symptom of pulmonary tuberculosis is the person who who is affected with this TB, pulmonary TB, will experience the symptom of a low grade afternoon fever. The person gets fever which is in a low grade, uh, not more than uh, or not one, but will experience fever, feverish like symptoms in the afternoon period. This stands for that the person is experience, uh, that, that the person is uh, being affected by the TB. So there are many other symptoms of uh, TB too, like diaporosis night time sweating so these are all other uh, sim symptoms but uh, this uh, low grade afternoon fever is the primary clinical manifestation that helps with the diagnosis next measles so this is the easiest one i think among all the conditions so coplex pouts over all the oral mucosa is the primary symptom of the measles if a person is 
affected uh, with measles then during the oral examination you can see there will be whitish spots on the oral mucosa so those are called poplic spots you can see the red color swelling around that spots too here you can see this white colored one is the coplic spot and you can see the inflammation around that spot so that is coplic spot measles next pyloric stenosis okay pyloric stenosis is also majorly seen in children uh, which with uh, congenital pyloric stenosis so pyloric stenosis is um, one of the sphincters of pylorus of the stomach is blocked or uh, yeah, you can say the there is a sphincter problem due to some mass so there will be stenosis of the pylorus at the stomach then the two main primary symptoms or the two main clinical manifestations that help with the diagnosis of pyloric stenosis is olive mass over epigastric region olive mass over epigastric region if you palpate abdomen of a kid or a, or a child who is uh, who is being suffering with the pyloric stenosis uh, you can see uh, a, ma a mass which is olive shaped you can see olive is like this okay a olive shaped mass at the epigastric region so that is where you can palpate the mass and it is the one of the uh, clinical features that confirms the diagnosis of pyloric stenosis and next one is projectile vomiting projectile vomiting is uh, not a, uh, not concerned with the normal vomiting actually so you can see kids uh, vomiting uh, like normally but projectile vomiting is a person vomits like uh, projecting uh, a thing so here you can see in the picture so projectile vomiting is this so it will be like projecting uh, something out of your mouth so projectile vomiting and allumas are the two clinical features uh, that cons that are concerned with the py pyloric stenosis next question next condition pneumonia so the primary symptom of pneumonia is rust colored sputum or greenish rusty sputum so the condition is diagnosed by this color of this sputum i mean in mainly in respiratory conditions so here in the picture you can see brown colored sputum which resembles something like iron rust so this is the one of the primary symptoms of pneumonia the person produces a sputum which is colored which is rust in color so next next condition mumps okay mumps is also a normal condition for us so the primary symptom of mumps or if uh, in exam you get question like uh, parotitis is seen in which condition they will be giving like uh, a measles b mumps c and my d uh, any other infections of mouth so you can blindly say that it is in mumps parotitis is seen in mumps parotitis is nothing para you know we all know what is parotid gland you can see here it is parotid gland and parotid gland inflammation inflammation of parotid gland is called parotitis so always you should be thorough with your uh, terminology so itis means inflammation parotid gland inflammation of parotid gland is called parotitis and this condition is seen in mumps so next condition it is meningitis so the main two signs that helps with the diagnosis of meningitis is 
Rudzinski sign and Kernick sign. So in the picture you can see the first one is Rudzinski sign and the second one is Kernick. First one is Kernick sign and this one is Rudzinski sign. So if uh, in Kernick sign, if a person, uh, if the examiner or a nurse or a physician flex the knee then there will be obviously increase in the abdominal pressure so the person will feel the pain in the muscle so coming back to bridging sign so in this sign if we flex the head of head i mean neck of a of a patient of the meningitis affected patient then he will automatic, automatically lifts his hip and knee so he uh, he will automatically flexes his knee that is what happens in rudzinski sign so these are uh, these two signs are the primary clinical features of of a patient affected with meningitis so next hyperthyroidism hyperthyroidism uh, mostly in uh, competitive exams they will give a picture of affected patient and they will ask you what is this condition or uh, in which condition this condition in which disease or in which disorder this condition might exist so they won't give you the uh, condition or they, the, uh, they don't name the clinical feature they directly uh, provide you with the picture and they'll ask the, what is the condition so this is the hyperthyroidism client so you can see the cornea is bulged out the cornea is bulged out that what that's what happens in the hyperthyroidism client and the condition is called exophthalmos so this condition is seen in clients who are affected with uh, thyro thyroid gland imbalance or who are affected with the hormonal imbalance of thyroxine t3 or t4 so next question next condition parkinson's disease so it is a neurological disorder and uh, and the main characteristics of, of this condition is pin rolling tremors you can see the person he 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 is having tremors and it is like he is holding some pin the tremor is like he is he is holding pin and he is like rolling the pin so here you can see in the picture the picture clearly depicting how the tremor will be it is a pin rolling tremor and the tremor is the main characteristic feature of parkinson's disease so when coming to another neurological diseases like a Huntington's chorea the person will have same uh, jerky dance movements so that is the reason why the condition is named as Huntington's chorea chorea is not nothing but choreography so the person exhibits clinical features like he was dancing so every neurological disorder or every disease or disorder has its own symptoms and primary clinical features that helps with the diagnosis and that says what the person is being affected and suffering from so next condition so this is all the today's video so thank you for watching our video guys please subscribe our channel the nightingale tales so this is vibi before signing off i want to request you people please like and share our videos because we are putting much effort we are de uh, before posting a video before preparing uh, preparing a video for you we are doing much research uh, over books articles and many websites searching uh, searching out many websites to bring you the accurate data so please guys please share and like our videos so it will be more encouraging for us help us grow so thank you this is baby signing off please subscribe our channel the nightingale tales thank you